Hey, I'm Arcee and this is the episode 8 about creating a multiplayer game with Node.js. If you haven't watched the last episode, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I'm planning to cover is how to create a logging system. So the first thing we are going to do is to modify the client so we have two states. So there's the state where we are in sign-in and there's the state where we are in the game, in the actual game. So this is how we're gonna do it. So um, there's gonna be two divs, so two containers. One is called sign div, which contain username, password, um, inputs, and two buttons for sign in and sign up. And there's gonna be another container that will be called game. And um, by default, the game is invisible, so it displays none, while the sign in is visible. So when you sign, um, you, you log into the page, you will only see this part over here. Now the next thing we will want to do is, I'm gonna put that here. So this is everything related with the game. Now let's do everything related with the sign in. So here's the list of document gets element by ID. There we go. And when we click on the button, on the button um, sign in, what we are gonna do is we're gonna emit a package to the server with the identifier sign in. So the server will receive a package with the username and the password entered in those input files and then it will have to do um, something. And we will also make another, we will listen to a certain type of package called the sign in response. So ba basically we emit a sign in and the server will emit a sign in response. If it's successful, then we are gonna uh, I the sign in div, so it's gonna be hidden and the game div will become visible. So this is the equivalent of visible in HTML. And if it's not successful, then we will alert, so display a message to the screen saying it's unsuccessful. Obviously for a real application, don't use alert, use, like normally would have another div, um, another container that has like the list of message sent by the server, that kind of stuff. But in our case, um, it, it will work, that's the goal. Okay, so on the server, this is how it goes. So when the client says socket IO, this function on the server is called, so on connection, and right as the player connects, we call this over here, and this, if you remember correctly, it creates a new player and listen to its key press and all that kind of stuff. But now we don't want to do that when the player connects. So we don't want to call to create a player when it connects. We want to do it after receiving a sign-in package and making sure that the sign-in package is correct. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna create a new listener called sign-in and only when sign-in is sent, that will actually create the player over there. Now, right now we are not doing any validation with the data. So now that's the, the next thing we're gonna do. So for example, the username needs to be Bob and the password needs to be ASD, for example. If this is true, then we are going to connect and we will also emit a package, sign in response, success, true. And if not, then we are going to send a sign in false. So let's just check a test if everything works. Okay, so we open the server, we go to localhost 2000, and there we go, we see the, the username, password, two buttons. Now if I type anything and I click sign in, it will say sign in unsuccessful. If I type Bob and ASD and I do sign in, I will log into the game. So it is working. Now, obviously we would want something better than this test over here. So right now, the only way to enter the game is to have the username Bob and password ASD. So instead, we're gonna create a, um, an object called users. And this will contain the username and the password of every player we know so far. For example, there could be Bob with ASD, there could be Bob two with, I don't know, Bob could be Bob3 with TTT, something like that. And in order to be a valid user, so is valid password, let's call it that way, 
Um, so it takes the data over here. So you need to exist. So that that's the first thing you need to do. Um, well, the, the the value of this, which is the password, needs to be equal to the password. There we go. So if you are a valid password, then you are going to connect. So it's going to test um, through all that list. So if you are part of that user list, you will be able to sign in. So let's just test it. Reset the server, log into the game. So if I try Bob with, let's say, just A, it's going to say unsuccessful. But if I do Bob2 with Bob and I sign in, it should be, it should let me sign in. So the next thing I want to cover is um, adding a sign up option. So obviously right now it's going to be a little bit dumb because all the users that will be created will be lost when the server will um, be turned off. Um, so obviously this is only temporary. In the next episode I'm planning to cover MongoDB, so how to install MongoDB and how to run it so the user base um, stays even if the server is shut down. But I want to have a working database system, so all the code working before actually introducing a real database. Okay, so um, to do the sign up, it's relatively easy. On the client, we create um, a new thing called on sign up. So when you click on the button sign up, it's going to send a package called sign up with the username and the password specified. And when you will also listen to a certain type of message called sign up response, and it's simply gonna display um, sign up successful or sign up not successful, depending on the success. Now, obviously, you could implement a system where data also contains a message and and that kind of stuff, but I want to keep it as simple as possible. So now on the server, we want to listen to the sign up package over here. So um, when you want to sign up, we'll create another variable called um, is username taken. And this will return this over here. So you pass the data and it's going to return true if there is someone in the username and we will also create another um, function called add user and it's going to do this over here data password there we go so um, over here what we do is is the username taken if so not successful and if it's not taken then we're gonna add it so add user and we're gonna emit uh, true. There we go. Okay, so now let's just um, test it. So we reset the server, localhost 2000. If I'm here and I type, let's say HHH, HHH, sign up, sign in, it's not gonna let me. But if I do sign up, it's gonna say sign up successful. And then I can sign into the game. And even if I log out and I log back in, it will remember me because I haven't shut down the server. But if I shut down the server, restart it um, and type HHH, it will not let me. Because then as soon as the server dies, everything dies. Okay, so right now the logic is um, good. Unfortunately, we it's not as simple as this when working with a real database. And the reason why is because a database is asynchron. So all our code right now is synchron. And what, what I mean by that is that our function is valid password. When we call it, it returns the value immediately. So there, there is no delay. You just, hey, what is is valid password? And you get the result immediately. Hey, is there a username? Is the username taken? We get the response immediately. With the real database, there is a delay between that. And in JavaScript, whenever there is a delay, you will need to use callbacks. I guess the easiest way to simulate how a real database would work is to do something like this. So put all our real, uh, database related function inside a set timeout, something like this. And if you try that, um, you will see that our code no longer works because isValidPassword does not return any value. It's just a 
set timeout and the return this over here is the return value of that function and it's gonna be lost okay it's gonna be lost and even if you were to do a return set timeout set timeout returns a, a, a number and it's not at all that thing over here so right now this value over here is unaccessible because when we return it, it is lost. So what we are going to do is to use a callback. So we have already used a lot of callbacks in the game so far. And what a callback is, is a parameter that is a function and we call that function with the result we were looking for. For example, it would look something like that, it would look something like that. In that case, if we don't have any, um, like data to really release to people, we just call it with no extra parameter. Okay, so here's CD and CD. So um, adding a callback to a function is not something new actually when you think about it. So over here, um, every time you have an action that will happen somewhere in the future, you don't really know when exactly it's gonna happen. Well, in that case, we know it's 10 milliseconds, but um, Every time it's something that's gonna be called in the future, we use a callback. And for example, our connection over here, so we do, hey, whenever a player connects to the game, call this function. So we don't know when it's gonna connect, we simply know that it's gonna be in the future, and that's why we add the second parameter, kinda like that, is a function, and in that function, the parameter of that function, the socket, so the data, is the first parameter, kind of like this over here. So, um, so data, then we put a function with the result. It's gonna look like that. This is really similar to this over here. That and with socket. So now it's time to uh, modify that part over here so it matches our new format for the data. So we can no longer do this over here because is valid password always return undefined. It does not return anything special. So how are we gonna do it? Kind of like on socket on like this over here. It's is valid data. Then we pass a parameter with the result. Now if the result is successful, then we connect and then we emit a, another package. Something like that. And for the sign up, it's exactly the same thing we do is taken. Second parameter is a function that is called whenever the action has to place. And if it's taken, then we will emit successful false. Otherwise, we'll add the user. So adding the user once again, it's put a callback. There we go. And then we will say it's successful. So maybe adding a user will take, I don't know, one minute, we, we don't know yet. And we will only send the response when the action will actually be done. Okay, so one thing I forgot is this over here, that's really important. So when we call is valid password, we want to get the result. So the result will be the first parameter, kind of like if I had forgotten the socket over here, this would not make a lot of sense. So let's just um, reset the server log into here so if I do Bob Bob sign in it should say unsuccessful if I do sign up it should say sign up unsuccessful because the username is taken or if I do Bob ASD sign in it's gonna let me sign in so I guess that will be pretty much it about this video hope you liked it in the next episode what I'm planning to do is to actually introduce the real database which so will be a MongoDB database so I will cover how to install it and how to do um, insert and update commands. So thanks a lot for watching and see ya.